are ready. Welcome to Randolph Memorial Baptist Church. I want to welcome you today. It's a, each week there's always an adventure and uh, as we've gone through this journey together as a community and then as a church, this is yet another little step along the way and we never know what each week will bring. But this is our first time to have one service since before COVID. Uh, mindful that we know COVID is still with us. Please hear that. We understand. So we've got a lot of folks watching online, as you have been, and I'm speaking to you. Uh, we also have the radio station only in the parking lot that you can participate in. And as fall comes, and it is coming, and cooler weather eventually gets here, that might be an option for some who just want to grab a cup of coffee and come into the parking lot and worship with us but aren't ready to come inside. So please keep that in mind if you're at home thinking about that. This service is being recorded as it's also live, and so if there's parts of the service you want to revisit or you want to share this with others, especially today as we honor uh, someone who meant so much to our church and you want to share that to someone, it will be on our Facebook page today, and then eventually we'll travel over to our YouTube channel today or tomorrow. So with that in mind, just a couple of things. First, I just want to welcome you, let you know that even though we're in one service, it's not a victory lap. We are very mindful that this virus is raging in our community and that the numbers are up and we're, we're very mindful. So at any point we feel that we need to go back to two services, we will. And so the best way to know what we're doing and if there is a crisis and we go back online only, if that happens, the way to know what's happening is that sign in the parking lot will tell you today it says a 10 a.m. service. So as you drive by, look at the sign at the church, and then secondly, online. Uh, if you go online, you can, um, on our Facebook page or our website, there will be up-to-date information. Now, you can call the church anytime you want. Amanda will answer the questions as well. But internet and the sign outside, you really, it's almost like every day we're living with a snow day possibility. So always look at those, and you'll know what's happening. Um, that's the world we're living in, flexible and innovative. Okay, a couple of announcements and then we're going to get on with things and, and it's going to be a good day. I want to thank you for some things we've been doing. We have finished our VBS online and it was good and, and many people enjoyed it. Uh, we're able to participate. Some kids really uh, got involved. The beauty of technology is it's up forever. So if you know someone that would like to uh, engage that material. It's on our YouTube channel. If they don't want to scroll down through the Facebook, they can watch the YouTube channel. Start with session one through four. Um, and if your kids really enjoy the music, just play it as often as they want. I'm going to do some stuff with that material in the months, weeks ahead so that, that those things will be easier. So tomorrow um, there will be a special little bonus that's coming out from some things we've already shown uh, that will be useful and you'll just have to check it out tomorrow. But this is a, has been a great journey, and so I just am thankful for all those who participated. Amanda's preparing a list of thank you, but you know who you are. We really appreciate it. Um, and we still have some crafts available, too. If, if you know someone that watches those sessions, let us know. We can get that to them. Uh, we have wrapped up Wednesday night's adult Bible study that's online this past week, and so at the end of the month, there will be something in the outside in the yard, uh, and then in after Labor Day, we will be having an online live. It will be a live event this time, not recorded, and more information coming soon. But we're going to take a little break on midweek services until after Labor Day or the end of the month, rather. Um, but you can check that out on Facebook, and I'll tell a lot more about that. But it, I'm excited as we prepare for what we're going to do after Labor Day. I think you'll really like it. Um, it's going to be different. Also, Impact Camp, the kids obviously didn't go away, but Cadence did an excellent job preparing some online and social distancing uh, options for our kids. And so uh, they did some mission work and some other stuff, but being very careful and separating and all that, it was very good. Uh, and so I'm thankful for that. So those are some things that have been going on. Um, we're getting ready to begin worship. I just want to give you some instructions, but I do want to say that I'm thankful that you're here and that you're doing what you can to help us stay safe, to stay together in these uh, different times that we live. But but you are making this possible. Um, and if you're at home and you're still not sure whether you're ready to come back in person, we understand. We want you to do it when you feel safe. But we're doing the best we can. Um, so some instructions for worship today. Uh, you have these little, little they're not snacks, don't worry. They're, this is communion. And they're in the pews in front of you. Does everybody have access to one of these? If you do not, raise your hand. If you do not have this little capsule. 
Okay. At home, make sure you have your bread and cup ready. Communion's not going to be at the end of the service. It's going to be um, after um, Cadence on video praise, uh, and reads and prays. And it will take a little work. I demonstrated this online, but you have to peel. I'm going to do it once more and then once over there. But you have to peel the top. And don't spill your drink. You put it back in the cup. But inside this little silk packet is a little wafer. And I'll give you plenty of time. And uh, that's where that is. And then your cup is right there. And I'll lead you through it all. But we're, we don't have to rush. But we don't want to make sure you know. We're doing it this way for obvious reasons. For to keep safe. It's the safest way we know to do communion. The option would have been to not have communion. But we believe that the Lord's Supper for 2,000 years has been a spiritual experience for God's people. And so this is the way we, we found would be the safest. We're also going to... Um, at the very end of the service, after my final prayer, we're going to stay seated and literally the fastest business meeting in RNBC history. One item to vote to adopt our officers and Sunday school teachers for the next year. If you're a member of our church, the other stuff we would have done has been mailed to you. If you did not get it, contact Amanda and you will get it. This was the safest way the deacons and, and myself felt we could do this uh, in this normal time, which would have been a meeting. So it's just literally, if you're visiting with us, it's literally going to be very very smooth and not take long, but it is important as Baptists we do this congregationally. So that's what's happening. We're going to begin, and uh, we're going to begin with a recognition of Gene Webster as lifetime deacon. Our church has lifetime deacons. It's an honor we give to specific folks who have served faithfully, and we uh, we're going to do this. And Gene has um, left us to be with God before we could do that. We love Gene. What a wonderful picture over here. You all, I'll make sure you all see that. We love him dearly, but we wanted to go ahead and do this in memory of, and his family's here, and I'm thankful you could be here. Uh, Gene was an inspiration. Uh, he reminded me a lot of my grandfather. Uh, he was just uh, a delight to be with, and I wish we had about 12 more Genes in our church uh, serving because he's just, just a delight, and we miss him dearly. So we're glad we can honor him today in that way. And I know our chair deacons, um, Jim Davis, is going to do that right now. So God bless you, and uh, we will continue this service, begin it together as one. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your love and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, uh, it's an honor to be here and a privilege to recognize Gene Webster and his family. Uh, not too many of you know, Nancy is my aunt and uh, it's, it's amazing to see her here today, and it's a great, great opportunity. You know, Gene was a humble man. Gene was a guy that really cared for others. You know, he would put others before he would put himself. Uh, Gene was very active in his church as a deacon. Uh, he liked to usher. He always ushered, and he done it well. I remember one time, Gene could have a sense of humor. I was walking across the parking lot in the door, and he was already here. And he said, here comes a knucklehead. <laughs> And I looked at him and I said, a knucklehead? He said, oh no, not you. Turn around and look. Well, here comes E.W. across the park. <laughs> but, but one of the things about it, he loved E.W., he loved Gregory, he loved Nancy. And it's just an honor to be here with this family today. It's an honor to have Joanne singing, Gregory on the drums, and E.W. on the sound system. This is a good family. They show everybody love, and we very much appreciate them. So today I was looking at the sign, and Derek's sermon topic today is the real deal. Well, you know, I've got the real deal right here. Gene Webster, Nancy, I would like to present this to you. Certification of service. Gene Webster, lifetime deacon, Randolph Memorial Baptist Church. Thank you. I just want to say thank you all. He was a good man, and we all loved him. And yes. I appreciate this very much. And it'll be hanging on my wall. Thank you.
Appreciate all those who have been involved in worship and for those who are online, I want to comment that we are working hard to even make the technology a little bit smoother on sound and we have ordered things and we're hoping in the near future that you'll be able to hear some of this beautiful music even better, just taking some time. We are continuing to learn as we go and so if you'll be patient, we are in the process trying to smooth things out working on technology. And our big goal will be to try to get the, tech, the sound to be so much crisper so that you can hear what we just heard, which is just wonderful and beautiful. But we're glad you're here with us today, and we are going to move into a time of communion. So if you have your elements ready, go ahead and be peeling the bread and the cup and getting them ready, and I'm going to walk us through this time. As you're doing that, I just want to say that we did not want to just not do communion until COVID is gone. For 2,000 years, Christians have celebrated and observed the Lord's Supper, Communion, Eucharist in times of war, tragedy, disaster, crisis, pandemic, plague, uh, oppression, you name it. And it is something that gives substance to our spirit and soul because it reminds us of our faith and what we're about. The scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 26, while they were eating, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. But then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. As Becky plays this song for us, I want to encourage you to just meditate on the bread and the cup that's in your hand. Just meditate upon the death of the body and the blood of our Lord. And then we will, I will give you the instructions and when we will take it together and pray. So let us meditate and pray together.
Take and eat and remember Christ who died for you. Drink from this cup and remember Christ who shed his blood for each of us. Gracious God, we gather in this observance not as mere tradition, formality, and ritual, but as a reminder and for renewal. We give thanks. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, we pray. Amen and amen. We come now to our time of prayer. I would mention to you a few prayer needs. We continue to remember the family of Francis Simpson. We remember Pam in prayer. And today I encourage you to look in the sports section of the newspaper to read more about the life of Francis Simpson. And uh, there will be a memorial this fall. Uh, we will let you know when that time comes. But read that today and give thanks for her life. We pray for the family of Jean Day. There will be a graveside service at Fort Hill Cemetery uh, this Saturday at 2. The details should be in the paper at the end of the week. We pray for her family as well. We pray for all those who are hurting and struggling. We know that the, the numbers of COVID that are rising. We pray for the frontline health care providers as they serve. We pray for those in harm's way with this uh, hurricane and storm that uh, is causing some evacuation. We also give thanks for the blessings of life, for a life well lived, the real deal, Gene Webster. For those of you who have been blessed this week and want to give thanks for life that God has given you and for the goodness. So let's pray together and give you that chance. Gracious God, we lift up in prayer these needs today. God, we also give thanks. God, as we pray and continue to pray, we are thankful for the blessings of life. We do not want to take for granted the goodness that you've given us, what life is truly about, but we are mindful. And we are mindful of those who are hurting and going through difficult times of loss and sorrow and health crisis. We worry and we are anxious, but at the same time, we know that you are a God who is present and with us. Guide us and care for us as we work together to be the people of God in this very time. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. I'm going to read to you from the Hebrew Bible, from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you, will, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without cost and with, uh, without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and you, your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. This is the word of God. God, take the reading of your word this moment together and may it speak to us so it can speak through us on Monday. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The web, the internet, knows you very well. You go to Facebook and an ad pops up that tries to get your money. And they're always close to the things you like because algorithms are at work to figure out what you usually buy and the sites you usually visit. So you're being marketed, marketed and targeted in a way that has never been more direct. Have you noticed that? It's a little frightening to some, and it's also appealing, those ads. We see a deal that sounds so good. Maybe it's a new car at pennies on the dollar, it promises, or a t-shirt from a favorite band at rock bottom prices. Sounds too good, too good to be true. You notice it's from a company you've never heard of, and you click on it, and what is advertised isn't really what's being sold, at least not at the price that they said. 
and the shipping and handling may be astronomic. The truth is, I've always been taught that you pay for what you get. Anybody else? And that deals too good to be good, true are usually what? Too good to be true. That nothing is free, no free rides. The shortcut usually takes you off a cliff. And I'm not telling you anything you didn't already know. Still, folks fall for those scams and empty promises. And we say, why? But we fall for them sometimes. I mean, most of us know it's shady, but we want that deal. We want what sounds so good. Maybe because of the rip-offs and distrust, some folks are viewing religion kind of that way. Maybe folks look at preachers like me as if I'm selling snake oil from the old days, a con artist. And I get that, because religion has been co-opted by political forces, consumer drive, and a host of other misguided and misunderstood realities. Yet here you are, in a mask in the middle of a pandemic, where you could be at home watching, or you're at home watching right now. Where if you're at home right now, you could be on Netflix watching One Billion Things, right? Please don't do that. But here we are, together. You choose to be online this morning. You choose to watch this maybe during the week. You choose to sit in a parking lot listening on the radio. You choose to worship here in this room. Because I think you know that despite all that I've said, deep down, you believe. You have faith. You know that God is God. And despite all that sometimes people who are religious have done that have almost destroyed faith, intentionally and unintentionally, but still, you believe that God has not, certainly not, left the building. God is here. God is real. God is love. And folks, really important to know this, God is inviting. God is placing an offer before you this day that does sound beyond belief. And it may sound as crazy as a Facebook ad, but this time, I'm not selling you a fantasy. I'm offering you God's promise and grace not some strange seeds from China. I'm promising you something you can trust. There is an offer from God that is beyond belief. And the book of Isaiah is about that. That prophet is proclaiming that to a people in exile by their enemies longing to come home, longing to see what was want, to see what once was, hurting in the meantime, questioning, doubting, just like our generation. And God is saying, don't give up. The scripture says, come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat, come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. It's pretty powerful. The prophet knows the reason people are looking and the reason people go the wrong way. The reason this happens is that we're all thirsty and needing, longing. We may not know what for, but we know there's a void in our soul and nothing seems to fill it. And the prophet says, come to the waters. He has a solution that is real, and it is for all, and it is not faith. He offers for those with no money to come and eat. How's that for a deal? If Chick-fil-A said, come, it's free, you couldn't get in the parking lot, could you? Can't get in there now. For those who think they can't get it, they can. Without cash, God's not charging you can have wine and milk without money and without price. Again, not something you're going to really find on the internet. But with God, oh yes. This gift of God's love and restoration is free. It's wonderful. It's needed. Water, food, and wine are what the people needed. And these metaphors point to the fact that this need can be filled and it is free. And yes, my friends, it is wonderful. Today, God is saying to you right now in this broken and anxious world, there is a love you can't buy and it's what you need. But there is a problem. There always is. We as human beings neglect that gift that God's offering, and we settle for less. We do it a lot. The prophet says, why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest affair. The prophet is clear that what we are settling for isn't real. It's fake, it's false, it's a failed imitation. Why do we work for that which just is not going to satisfy us? Why do we settle for less? Why do we spend energy and time on futile and failed broken systems? Why do we keep giving to that? Make no sense. Makes no sense now or then. Folks, you know, we have one life. Why would we waste it? 
Why do we spend all that energy and resources and invest in that which only makes our life harder? Why not invest time, resource, and energy in that which makes our lives better and, frankly, more beautiful? The choice is always before us, and here it is. The real deal. Do we take it or not? Do we go for what's authentic or a cheap imitation? I mean, Isaiah says, give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. That's what the offer is. John Steinbeck's novel, Travels with Charlie, describes how Steinbeck uh, bought a camper and he traveled the country with his dog Charlie throughout the United States. And during that trip, one of the things he experienced was a small, beautiful, whiteboard church up in New England. Charlie was not allowed to go in. He was a dog, but Steinbeck went inside and he heard one of those fire and brimstone kind of sermons. Steinbeck said, quote, the preacher took my sin seriously. He told me that if I didn't change, something was going to happen. And he threw thunderbolts all around me. He added later, then I went to church virtually every Sunday on my trip and found that nobody else in America preaching took my sins quite as seriously as that unknown New England preacher in that little white church. The challenge, my friends, is this. We need to take seriously the sins and the failures that we commit. We need to take seriously the realities of our situation. We've got to get this right. I mean, the prophet says, give ear, listen carefully, which means to lean in. Lean in, really focus. The word listen here is not just to hear the words, but to get the point and to respond. Real listening means like actually doing it. I can tell my kids to take out the trash, but until I hear the trash going out the door, they didn't listen. And so I wonder, are we listening to God, leaning in, paying attention and responding? Because what God is saying is that with God, the best is yet to come. The prophet brings it to a close, to a pitch, better than any Facebook ad. He brings it to that big moment about choosing God, and he says, quote, See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, this is my favorite line, for he has endowed you with splendor. If you go back to verse 2, he promises rich food. But what he's saying here is that God is offering something good, really good, and it brings promise and blessing. In the end, the blessings that flow from us, we're told in this passage, bring others to God. But this nation of God will bring other nations to God. Those nations who reject God at that moment will one day see the beauty of God. And the best thing yet is that you can turn your burdens into blessings. And then that blessing can go and reach the world. Maybe this makes sense. A woman by the name of Siobhan Kolak tells about a friend of hers who teaches first grade in Toronto, Canada. This friend is teaching math, teaching math to a class of six-year-olds. But in that group, there was a bunch of kids who were refugee children. And the lesson that day was fractions. The teacher explained the difference between a quarter and a half in fractions. Then she asked the class to write down, to illustrate this, would you prefer, she asked them, to have a quarter of a chocolate bar or a half of a chocolate bar? Kids, you need to learn math. That's an important question. Do you want a quarter of a chocolate bar or a half of a chocolate bar? And she thought this would be a good way to teach. But when she began to look at their papers, she noticed that many of the refugee children wrote a quarter of a chocolate bar. They did not write half. And she was concerned that they weren't grasping this lesson. So before correcting their math, she asked them, why did you choose a quarter of a chocolate bar rather than a half? They all looked at each other, and one little girl spoke for the group so that more people could have a piece of chocolate. In our consumer world, we'd say we want the whole bar. But that kid gets it. Sometimes you have to really be in need to realize what need means and what blessing means and what sharing means. Folks, let me be honest. I have more than I need I suspect most of you would say amen to that. And we are given so we can give. We are blessed so we can bless. And that will change us, ourselves, our world. And as it says, then we will find a life endowed in splendor. It's just another word for glory. We will find life, real life, the real deal. We'll find meaning, purpose, beauty. There's a story I like to tell touches me every time I see the clip. 
and children's TV star, Mr. Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers, who was actually the coolest nerd in the world, right? When he was defending the need for funding for programs for kids in front of Congress, he amazed the politicians and crowds, and you can look up this clip. During his testimony on live TV, he spoke why they needed money to have programming like his show. One senator was so moved by what he was saying, he said, well, I'm supposed to be a tough guy, and this is the first time I've had goosebumps for the last two days. Roger thanked him for his kindness, for his interest. Then for 60 seconds on live TV before Congress and the world, Mr. Rogers recited the words of one of the songs he used to sing on his TV show. I won't sing it to you. I'll save you from that, but I will quote it. What do you do with the mad that you feel when you feel so mad you could bite? When the whole wide world seems oh so wrong and nothing you do seems very right. What do you do? Do you punch a bag? Do you pound some clay or some dough? Do you round up friends for a game of tag or see how fast you go? It's great to be able to stop when you've planned a thing that's wrong and be able to do something else instead and think this song. I can stop when I want to, can stop when I wish. I can stop, stop, stop any time. And what a good feeling to feel like this and know that the feeling is really mine. Know that there's something deep inside that helps us become what we can for a girl can someday be a woman and a boy can someday be a man. Something that never happens in Congress, silence followed. And one senator said, quote, I think it's wonderful, I think it's wonderful. Looks like you just earned $20 million. And that money, of course, went to the programs to keep the message of character and kindness and respect and sharing, being human. Years later, after Mr. Fred Rogers has left this place to be with God, they needed funding and funding again in 2017, and Mr. Rogers was gone. What they did is they played that clip, and the funding came through. Rogers got it that we need kids to find real life, real meaning, real purpose. He dedicated his life to helping kids to grow up and become people with meaning. Isn't that what we should all want? The real deal? Not a fake, cheap imitation. So here we are, and I'm not here really to sell you anything. I'm not even going to try to convince you of anything because I can't. I'm simply here to offer to invite the God who gave his love to me. I'm here to offer the mercy I have received. I'm here to point out the grace and love that waits for us all. Because the vacuum and gap of the soul can't be filled by anything else, and the attempts that I've tried always fall short. And so this is our choice and our moment, our decision. It's one we make every day in a million ways. And what is it again? Will I choose for my life on a daily basis that which is best, meaningful, and beautiful? Or will I take a shortcut? The real deal. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this time to be together. It's hard. Things are not the way we want them to be. But you're with us. The world may change, but you don't. Your love is here. Help us. Guide us. And may, through all the anxiety and stress, may we keep the real deal before us. May we keep you before us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Normally at this time, we would pray, we would sing, and we would come back in 10 minutes and do this 30, 40-minute business meeting. But we're going to do a 30, 40-second one. You like that? 40 seconds, 40 minutes. Would you, do we need a motion on that? Uh, it sounds funny. You say, gosh, the spiritual moment when we were going to turn to an item of business. But the church is not a business, a corporation, or a store. Everything we do is spiritual and God's work, even if we're voting on spending money. Amen. So what we're going to do is call you into motion, into business. If you're a member, I hope you'll vote. If you're not, I hope you'll pray for us. But we have Sunday school teachers and officers who guide us, and they'll guide us for 2020 and 2021. And so this is a spiritual act. You say to your teacher, when do I get back in the classroom? I don't know. But I'm thankful you'll do it when that time comes. When you get your job, though, you don't have to have a classroom to teach and lead. You can do it through phone calls and cards and keeping in touch or on Zoom like our class is doing. And if you don't know what Zoom is, you can, one of our classes is mailing lessons to their students. You're still a leader. 
and I'm thankful for all those who serve. We put that list in the uh, letter that went out. I can't pass out anything today because of COVID. So all those who affirm our Sunday school teachers and leaders for 2020, 2020 and 2021, raise your right hand and say amen. Any opposed? Like sounds? I always say if you oppose, see me after and I'll get you a job. It's a weird business meeting, isn't it? But isn't that the quickest? Amen. All those okay with that? Deacons and I, we talked and we just want to keep you safe. There is another meeting in November. Don't know what we'll do with that one yet, but we'll figure it out. May God bless you as we leave this place. I'm going to send our benediction and then the ushers will come forward to escort you out. Um, my friend Gene's picture is right here to my right. And so uh, today, wherever Gene is with God, we give thanks for his ministry in this church and for his beloved family. Uh, and we, we were glad we could do that today. Um, may God bless you. Let This will be our, our closing prayer. As we go out to this place, we are following God. May we live like it. May we take faith in that. Trust, hope, faith forward all the way. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, we go. Amen. As you step out today, remember the good, good Father, the real deal, loves you. This song is a reminder of that. You can sing along as you leave, uh, or just sit and listen.